Hi everyone, Black Thinny Black Tano here, and I'm doing a music review for the music album, the News Time music album. Please listen to this. And yes, this is a music album from the famed internet show as hosted by Chad White, and there are some songs on here. I don't know how he made them, but he seemed to do it. Now, I always haven't been a fan of this guy, but I thought I'd give this a try. Let's see how we took it. We liked it or anything. So the first song on the album, on the track listing, is a Coke cover. Now, you might remember the song Coke, uh, Want to Buy the World of Coke, and it's a famous uh, commercial that is done all over the world, and it was okay here. It was, it was poorly made, poorly executed, and it might even have some mistakes still in it. And then the next song up is the News Time Shuffle, which is part of the uh, parody that he did a couple of years ago when he went to the Super Bowl and it was, a, it was making fun of the Super Bowl shuffle. This song was, the backing vocals are still there for the hook and it just doesn't make sense. Uh, of course, the next song after that is generic TikTok song and it's a lot of whispers coming from Chad as he sings about uh, having sex and everything, things that he's never done before, but it's, it's, it's for the song apparently. Then there's the Waitress parody song, uh, Reading Up, and this one's a little bit better because the production's a little bit higher up there, uh, but even still, it's not that good of a song. And then of course, there's the Hamilton melody, which is probably the best song on the album, let's be honest here, but again, he just does such a poor job at the execution, and even the rapping parts kind of feel like it's late 80s to early 90s rapping. It's like he really, really likes NWA, but he doesn't know how to rap like them at all. And then we have We Are News Time, which is another parody song, but this time it's parodying We Are The World. Uh, it's the that old song that featured a, a bunch of celebrities trying to get together and sing songs about a tragedy and saying that they can come together. Uh, it's not a good song. It wasn't a, a good song, the original, and now this song's not good either. And then, of course, there's the theme song to News Time as done by Stevie Wonder. Uh, this is a song that Stevie Wonder did, in fact, make in his home, and he is making fun of the host of News Time, Chad, the entire time, and uh, I do think it's the best song in the album. I'm feeling a strong two overall as a project. Uh, this is a very, very bad album. I don't know why News Time and, and Chad decided to release this in the first place. Uh, transition to the theme song. It's News Time. Delivering to you the news you didn't know about, the news you didn't care about, and the news you didn't know you cared about. With host, Chad White. Now, here's that host, Chad White. Welcome back to News Time. I'm your host, Chad White, and this is the Taylor news that you didn't know about. This summer has not been the best in terms of music. Uh, the coronavirus pandemic slowed releases more or less to a halt for the first half. Artists were unsure if they should put out projects due to the fact that they can't tour. And as we all know, touring is where they make the most money alongside merch sales, of course. Also, TikTok dances too, I guess. Nevertheless, musicians eventually let albums out of their MP3-based housings. The weekend after hours did gangbuster numbers. The chicks pushed uh, country to new heights with Gaslighter, and Pop Smoke shook the earth from beyond the grave with Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon. I feel wrong for saying that. Uh, but one artist ventured outside of her bubble for the fourth time in four albums, and it's paying off pretty well. Taylor Swift's folklore dropped without a hint of being real. In less than 24 hours, it was announced, released, and gobbled up by the masses of people staying inside. The black and white motif along with the sullen tone caught everyone by surprise, more so than the surprise release itself. Uh, Swift shifted her voice to not carry the bounciness of songs past. Subject matter is largely the same, yet it feels more adult contemporary than early, 2000, uh, early 20s angst. Uh, critics were taken aback by the new, what many are referring to as alternative tone. Uh, Karen Gans of the New York Times was one such person. I don't like the album. I don't think it's terrible, but I don't like it. I think there are some beautiful lyrics, and I think there are some beautiful moments of instrumentation, but that does not mean that it's a great album. And JP, I was just meditating on what you just said, and I don't think that my dislike of it is related to not wanting her to change. 
I think that it's just not serving for me. There's a couple of things going on. One, I just don't think that the sound is serving all of her melodies in the way that they could be right now. And but my main critique is I feel like there's 16 songs and that there are four great songs and two good songs and a lot of doodles and filler. And that if this were a 10 track album, I think that this would be a really different conversation for me. But I think that there's just too much stuff and that it's obscuring the things that are really, really good. And again, that's not to say that there aren't good moments. This is not a referendum on reviews of the album. But if you were to only read reviews of the album, you would, you would really think that this is the best album that's ever come out. I just, I don't see it that way. Fans with blinders on could easily jump on Gans's analysis, but what would be the point? Criticism is needed and she's doing it the right way, i.e. without simply saying, this bad, I no like it, which is how a majority of the internet works. <laughs> I'm burned. <laughs> And maybe she's wrong. Maybe you like something more than she does. Rob Sheffield of the Rolling Stone liked folklore. I liked it. Others didn't. And that's life. Artists like Taylor Drake and Lady Gaga can genre bend to mild or great effect. When it pays off, it does so greatly. Uh, Taylor broke not one, but two records with her latest release as she became the first artist to debut at number one on the Billboard 100 and 200 charts within the same week. To think a song about your grandfather's favorite piece of clothing could be so inspirational. Also note that Folklore is Taylor's seventh number one on the 200 chart. This is a big deal given that just two years ago, I did a similar story about Billboard charts when the charting game changed. Billboard revamped how it counts the many avenues in which people listen to music. They separated streams into tiers. Uh, for the Billboard 200 album chart for the last few years, the only tier was this. 1,500 streams equals one album for on-demand subscription services like Apple Music or Google Play Music. Lock that info in because here come more qualifiers. There are now multiple tiers within the 200 album chart for on-demand streams. Tier 1 is 1250 streams equals one album for paid subscription streams. That also includes free trials to paid services. Tier 2 is ad-supported streams in which 30,750 streams equal one album. Not to mention those who purchase at least 10 tracks of an album will also be counted towards one unit sale. Un video and program streams are counted only in singles Hot 100 chart, not the 200 album chart. In 2019, believe it or not, Billboard plans to get even more detailed by having the 200 album chart depict numbers from higher paid subscriptions such as Titles Hi-Fi and cheaper subscriptions that only offer some of the music, not all of it. 2020 is the first calendar year with all the new rules implemented. While it does offer a clearer picture of what artists are thriving, it makes for only the popular artists to continue being popular. That is unless TikTok catches on. Damn you TikTok! Then this could be all for naught. Uh, with folklore, the critics and fans are split on whether to call this pop or something else, but charts don't lie. Of course, this being anything dealing with Taylor Swift, there's controversy. So take a look at a side by side here. So on the left is the cardigan that Taylor was selling on her website. So you can see the design of the folklore album logo. And on the right is a shot of the logo for the fashion line, the folklore, which has been around for years. So very similar. Hmm. Yeah. And the creators of that line, Amir Rasul, posted that comparison and wrote this on Instagram. Wait, hold up. Taylor Swift, it's one thing to use the name folklore, but we're out here stealing black women's logos, too. Based on the similarities of the design, I believe the designer of the merch ripped off my company's logo. I'm sharing my story to bring light to the trend of large companies slash celebrities copying the work of small minority owned business owners. I'm not going to let this blatant theft go unchecked. So once the Taylor, so once Taylor's team was made aware of Amira's post, they reached out to her and released this statement. Yesterday, we were made aware of a complaint that the specific use of the word the before folklore album on some of the folklore album merchandise was of concern. Absolutely no merchandise using the before the words folklore album has been manufactured or sent out. In good faith, we honored her request and immediately notified everyone who had ordered merchandise with the word the preceding folklore album. They will now receive their order with the design change. The logos do appear similar. It's probably not theft. 
Now calm down and don't hop on the internet with straight anger before reaching out with the concern that your logo has been taken. At the end of the day, it's all fine. And look, all the stuff going on outside, that's what matters. Not if some artist you don't like put out an album you just have to make fun of on Twitter or Reddit. Plus, it's not like you spent money on it. Nothing matters now. And that's why folklore, Taylor, and music as a whole are doing so well. Hey, listen, if you like things that do so well, why don't you try making us do well? Like subscribing and checking out one of our other videos. Of course, you can head to the website, cpluscomedy.com, where there are interviews with your favorite comedians. And by gummit, you're going to love it. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at C Plus Comedy. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Chad Black White. Like us on Facebook and listen to the Constitutionals podcast wherever you get your podcast. And I think I'm going to slip on a cardigan and head out to the woods and walk around. Maybe Taylor's invited.